The views expressed on this program are those of the producers and individuals appearing on this program and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Sun Prairie Media Center staff, its video service providers, or the staff and elected officials of the city of Sun Prairie. We're all familiar with the three what's, what it is, what it can do for me, and what does it cost. Tyler Rickenau Country Financial can help you find the answers with insurance coverage to help protect what's most important to you, all at a price you can afford. So while you're juggling work and kids while trying to keep an eye on your financial future, Tyler Rickenau Country Financial will make sure they are the first ones there when you need them most. The kids are back to school and your schedule is busier than ever. From daycare pickup, doctor's appointments, sports and college tuition, a parent's signature is a powerful thing. Have you ever stopped to think, what would happen if you weren't able to provide one? With thoughtful estate planning, you can make sure that your child's health and education needs are met in the event of your absence due to a temporary incapacity or even death. The estate planning team at Hurley Burrish is here to help. Fostering deeper relationships, influencing behavior change, developing resilience. You're about to start winning. Here is your host, Christine Bright. Welcome to Parenting Game. I am so glad you are here. We are in our health and wellness series, and we know exercise is so important. Often we do it on our own and we may not have ideas on how to invite the family into our exercise routines. So today I'm excited to have Emily and Lauren from Orange Shoe who are gonna share some exercises that you can do any place with or without equipment and you can even do them with your family. Emily, Lauren, thank you so much for coming onto the show again. You were here last year for the health and wellness series. Um, I hear the plan is, is that I'm going to be doing most of the working out today. So yay, yay for that. But before we dig in and we start showing some great exercise moves, I always like to ask my guests, what is something that you can pat yourself on the back for that you have done well as a parent. Emily, we'll have you go first. Sure. Um, my family is very kind of proud in that we make certain activities that may be a single person activity and we change them into family activities. So one thing we always do is we take the dogs on a long walk after dinners. Um, we walk to and from school whenever we can and we try to make everyday kind of requirements um, kind of a family bonding time and get everybody out and moving and help get rid of some of the after dinner crazies that my kids <laughs> tend to have. That's great. I like that. Lauren? What yeah, I think um, I would just piggyback on that and say that um, it's really, for us, it's been um, creating a value around uh, taking care of your body and appreciating what you're capable of and feeling strong, feeling healthy and helping the kids make really great choices on their own and not uh, because mom says, you need to eat your vegetables or hey, you, you know, like just really making it enjoyable for them and um, giving them the, um, in a non-scientific, just a, a very empowering way to feel good about yeah. how they move and what they do. Absolutely. So Lauren, share some family activities that you've kind of made, you know, a main part, maybe a cornerstone, but that you uh, enjoy doing as a family. We are in the thick of every kid going in multiple directions with sports and piano and all of the activities. Um, and the one thing that I think we come back to is going for hikes. Um, and so this area we are blessed with so many amazing yes. city and county parks. Um, the Ice Age Trail, and just so many opportunities to get out and explore. And the thing that um, helps with that is that uh, if you if you find the interesting places and then point out all of the really cool little pieces of nature along the way, the kids enjoy it so much more than just saying, "Hey, we need to go get some exercise. Let's mm -hmm. go for you know just go and walk, go and hike, go and walk." But making it more of just the experience and really enjoying it. And so that's that's definitely one of the activities that despite getting pulled in a million directions, we really take, uh, make an effort to have that time together. Yeah, it's important to make 
to be intentional, right, right, with those activities. You can say, you know, we're just going to go for a walk, but that intentional piece of pointing things out, yeah. it makes it so much more engaging and right. for them to look forward to. Mm -hmm. What are activities that your family bonds around? Sure. Um, and kind of with Lauren, I have a very competitive six-year-old. So when she doesn't want to go on walks and when she would rather kind of just sit around, um, we create a scavenger hunt. Or we'll do, you know, a checklist of all the things that she has to try to find, different shaped leaves, different shaped plants, um, certain animals, and really make it more of a game. Um, and it's going to be a different scavenger hunt list for my three-year-old and then my six-year-old. So it really can kind of grow with them and they can learn more about what they're seeing and why it's special mm -hmm. um, along the way. So That's a great idea. I'm kind of, I have a science background, so I'm kind of excited to see my kids get excited about that sort yeah. of stuff. That was one of the cool things that I did like seeing through COVID and wish so much it would have continued, but people were doing that. There was a heart scavenger hunt, mm -hmm. you know, where you drove around and, and found them. And then, mm -hmm. you know, we do have the Bucky Badgers all over and right. that just like ballooned into a big activity. I, I'm pretty sure a lot of people didn't realize how many Bucky's <laughs> were painted and all over until COVID hit. And it's like, we gotta go out They're and do still something. All over the community. Yeah. yeah, and I'll still once in a while run across some place that I've driven by or walked by many times. And mm -hmm. oh, wait a, a minute, here. what, there's a Bucky <laughs> yeah. in there? So very, yeah. very cool. And I think Destination Madison still has them all listed on their website and okay. have some really well, you can go exciting ways to interact with them. Yeah. yeah, and then years ago, they had the cows, yeah. where they had done the cows. I'm like, that cows. was, mm -hmm. I don't even want to put how many years ago. Yeah, that, was, that was flying by too, too fast. Um, so we're going to get into a little bit about Orange Shoe, what people can expect when they come to Orange Shoe. Emily, I've personally trained with you. Mm -hmm. um, one of the biggest benefits that, I liked about having the personal training is I needed some modifications this due to injuries um, I had some pain and you were able to target exactly where the pain was coming <laughs> from because I'm like it's over here and you're like no I think it's right there so it was really really helpful and just give an overview um, Emily will go a little bit with you if you can talk about what people can expect with personal training and how that works. And then Lauren, if, I know you do group fitness. Mm -hmm. So if you can share what those classes look like. Sure. Um, and no matter if you're a personal training client or a small group client, we always start with an initial consultation. That gives you and the team member a chance to sit down and really discuss what your goals are. Uh, we put you through a little bit of movement to see how your body kind of moves under its own power. And we talk about previous injuries, any sort of medical concerns that we want to factor into really customizing your plan for you. Um, and from that, if you've got injuries, if you've got very specific goals, it helps us program out what a safe but effective program would look like for you. Um, and that's really our starting point is getting that level of customization built in from the very first session so that if you do have injuries, there's no working through the pain. We're able to isolate what movements trigger it. We're able to work around that so we don't create more pain, but instead build a solid foundation so that you are hopefully pain-free after a certain amount of time and you really experience a boost in what you're able to do outside of the studio, which is why we focus so much on functional fitness instead of some of the kind of that's what I'm looking for, like fashionable fit, fitness trends. Mm -hmm. We really want to focus on making sure your outside of the studio life is as strong and confident as it can be. And you're able to do those things that you want to do without pain, without worrying about if you can complete that movement. Um, so that is really kind of the starting point. And then the personal training sessions are just designed for you, like I've said a few times, and we're able to kind of track progress a number of different ways to make sure that we are headed toward whatever your direction of interest is. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got people that train at our studio that are going on an alpine hunting trip and they really want to get their conditioning level up so they're not exhausted hiking 10, 15 miles in the mountains. We've got people that are training for triathlons. We've got people that just want to be able to pick up their grandkids. And so those fitness goals are so different that why would you have the same workout as everyone in there, you know? Mm -hmm. I liked it, you know, for me, I was getting back into the childcare industry mm -hmm. and I noticed I am having trouble getting up off the floor, pushing myself off the floor 
a lot mm -hmm. and you helped with that and then I also came in with I can't do lunges you're like yeah you can <laughs> we're just gonna modify you know what they look like because of some of the pain I mm -hmm. had so there's no I can't I found out in personal yeah. training yeah. <laughs> all right share with us a little bit about the classes so our group sessions um First and foremost, like Emily said, you're going to start with a consult just like someone that's planning on doing one-on-one -on -one sessions. Um, so we can really determine, like, is the group setting the best place, safest place for you? Um, and if it is, great. Then we'll move you into that group environment if that's what you want. Um, but our groups are still small. So they're not, uh, you're not going to be with 20, 30 people getting lost in the crowd. Sorry, our eyes are still going to be on you. <laughs> You're still going to get our modifications. We may be saying, hey, you know what, Christine, I know that that shoulder is bothering you a little bit. I want you to do this instead. Um, or we may be saying, hey, you are strong. You can do more. Let's push you a little bit. Um, and that's where we're really able to give that personalized approach to both our one-on-one -on -one sessions and our group sessions. So a lot of our group clients still feel like it is personal training within a group environment. The benefit there, you're sharing the cost of the session with mm -hmm. um, with other clients. Um, so it, it's really still a very personalized and customized approach within the groups. Our team is still tracking progress. Um, we typically ask for advanced reservations in our groups so that the trainer is looking ahead and knowing who's there. And we, we are well prepared to make some of those changes um, for each individual person in the group session. Yeah, talk a little bit about your building too. When we were talking before we started filming, you had used the term boutique. Mm -hmm. And I really like that because I know for a lot of people, if they think about wanting to start a physical fitness, going into like the bigger buildings around here, you know, not knowing it can be so intimidating. So mm -hmm. share a little bit about the atmosphere in the boutiqueness of Orange Shoe. Yeah. Um so we're small, we're a studio setting. All of our, our studios are under 2,000 square feet. Um, and when you come in, if you're in that group setting, you're gonna be with you know a, some other people. But if you're one-on-one, -on -one, it's gonna be you and your trainer, maybe another client and trainer. Um, and so it just gives you a little bit more privacy and intimacy. And for a lot of people that have either had negative experiences in the fitness area in the past, mm -hmm. Or maybe they're just a little bit scared, a little bit nervous, haven't done it before, aren't really sure. Um, it really creates kind of a safe space. Um, we do some things intentionally within our studios to help people feel more comfortable. One of those is we don't have mirrors um, on our walls. No, I never. You don't. No, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and for a lot of people that are uncomfortable with something about their their physical state, just seeing that reflection can be like frustrating and right away you're put into a, a really negative mental space. Mm -hmm. um, we are, as a trainer, we're your eyes for you. You don't need to see what your form looks like because we are gonna help you make sure that you're doing everything correctly. You have safe and effective movement patterns. Um, and it just allows you to focus on how you feel? Are you activating the muscles that we're talking about? Um, can you keep going? You know, just all of the things that um, take that you don't have to see yourself in the mirror. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's definitely a place for having a mirror if you're mm -hmm. working out on your own. I think that makes perfect sense so you can see what you're doing. Um, but in our space, we really want it to just be really um, welcoming and yeah, I think that's an important piece. Yeah. yeah, and I know connection is really important for the orange shoe philosophy. So mm -hmm. Emily, how how do you approach connection? What does that look like when somebody comes in? Like, how am I gonna connect? What does that look like? It can sound like, oh, am I gonna have to like, again, that pressure of meet yeah. everybody. So mm -hmm. what's your approach to connecting? Sure, um, so while everything is very kind of private and people are there working with a trainer, so they're really focused on what they're doing and not looking around to see what everyone else is doing, um, we do try to build a sense of kind of community and um, connection, like you would say. We make sure to introduce all of our clients to each other, to all of the team members, and we really try to build a small scale kind of tight knit community within the orange shoe walls because everyone there no matter what they look like, what their goals are, what their movement patterns look like, 
they're there to improve some aspect of their life. And I feel like that kind of common goal can really bond a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And our small group clients are really good friends after a while. And they're incredibly inclusive. And if there's a new person, you know, before I can even introduce them, they're introducing themselves to this new person and they're joking and they're making everyone feel really welcome right right away. Um, and I'll see our PT clients get to know the person after them or before them because we build that consistency into their routines and um, they'll start talking about what they did over the weekend or how their kids are, or whatever it may be. Um, you really do kind of unintentionally build this community inside this, this space. It's very yeah. relationship-based and not in a sort of like fake or forced way, but just most of the people that we work with we're seeing three times a week or more and so naturally we get to know what's going on in their lives we can tell if the day is going well for them or if they're in a bad mood if they didn't sleep well like all of those things and that just naturally builds a really trusting relationship yeah well when i was coming in with my friend you know you we we came in one morning we're both like dragging you're like mm, okay so we're gonna adjust <laughs> a few things and that was this lovely to have that type of attention mm -hmm. where you did that um we've got to get into doing the movements but yes. i do want to be real quickly what is the age range that you work with like do you work with teens how what's what's your oldest client like yeah. what's that age range that you can work with lauren i'll have you answer that sure. one um you know, most of our clients kind of fall into a 35-ish to 55-ish. Um, but we do work with high school athletes, college students, and, you know, people in their early professional careers, as well as retirees. We've worked with individuals in their 90s. Um, and that's really the beauty of the personalized approach and having team members with really great skill sets um, is that we'll work with a huge range, but okay. uh, we definitely connect well with people that are like in the thick of parenting and work <laughs> and all the responsibilities of adulting that that we all are so familiar with. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So no excuses. It's like I'm too old to get into this. <laughs> yes. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah. All right. We are going to get into the programming here. We'll get these on the set. You guys are going to work me out here. I'm nervous. Yes. I'm nervous. Okay, where should I go? All right, so why don't you stay right in the middle. I'm going to be okay. talking through uh, the, the exercises and okay. our routine. And Emily will be helping Christine out a little bit, or Emily will be giving us some modifications. So um, like you said before, this is going to be something that either you can do on your own. You wake up before the kids are up, and you've got 30 minutes, and you want to get something good. Great, do that. But I'm going to also talk through each of these moves in a way that you can incorporate your family into them, whether they're real little ones or teenagers. So, awesome. All right. All right. Let's get Ready? started. Okay. Let's do it. So we're going to assume here that you've already gotten a little bit of a warm up in. I know we were just sitting, but let's <laughs> pretend that you've moved your body for about three minutes at least, just kind of warming things up, whether that was a quick walk around you know, the, the house or doing some gentle stretching. So um, the, the, all of these exercises, um, if you're doing them at home, we're gonna have you do about one minute of mm -hmm. the, the exercise. And then in between each exercise, there's gonna be 30 seconds of a core or active recovery movement. Okay, okay. so one minute one of minute. the exercise and the 30 second recovery right. movement. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so the first one, Christine, I'm gonna have you grab the dumbbells right down here. And we're gonna be doing a thruster. This is essentially a squat and press. So we're gonna start with the dumbbells up at your shoulders. Emily's giving a modification. You can do this with no weight, especially if you have any shoulder pain. Um, feet are hip width distance apart, and you're gonna take it back into a squat. You're under some load right here, with some okay. resistance. So take your squat only as low as feels comfortable. You're gonna come down, and as you come up, exhale, press those dumbbells over your head. Now, I didn't ask about that shoulder. Should we? Oh, no, it? that's okay. all good. I only got that all fixed. <laughs> she got, so I okay. can do stuff now. So that's our movement here is just that squat and come on up and press. Now, if you're feeling really good, really warmed up, you can take them a little bit higher intensity, a little bit faster, um, or we can keep them at a very slow, controlled pace. Okay. okay. All right. So, um, this is a fun one when you've got kids doing it with you to like challenge each other to like 
not necessarily go too fast. That form looks crappy, but yeah. to be um, like keeping pace with each other, not getting behind one another. So that's the way that I like to do exercises like this with my family. Awesome. So um, our um, alternate exercise, the one that um, we're going to do in between is a band pull apart. So Christine, Emily, you can grab one of those. Okay. If you don't have a resistance band at home, we can do this with zero resistance. So you're gonna, I'm gonna have you go palms face up. You're gonna hold the band so that it's um, not super tight, but it has a little bit of resistance um, about at shoulder distance apart. And then you're just gonna squeeze those shoulder blades back and together. Oh, that is right harder there. than you. Yeah. So I know we don't like I to know. go our backs to the camera, but can you turn around just so everyone can see? Christine has great shoulders too. So she's squeezing, <laughs> almost like she's pinching my fingers right here. And Emily's doing the same thing without any resistance. We're just activating that backside, opening up your chest. Okay, so that one's your 30 second exercise. Okay. Yep. Um, and then we're gonna move on. So Emily, we're gonna have you holding the resistance mm -hmm. band for Christine, um, we'll get these all out of the way. Christine, you're gonna, yeah, you're gonna turn and face Emily okay. and grab, yep. And so we're gonna take this to a reverse lunge and row. I'm gonna have you oh, hold, hold it, it just like this. Okay. Yep, okay. Hand, let's go palm space. Oh. Yep, okay. there you go. And now you're gonna step back into a lunge, whatever feels good for you, and okay. pull that band back. Like? Yep, like that. Like you're squeezing your <laughs> shoulder blades together as you come back. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So the reason we just warmed up with that band pull apart is now we're getting this activation. Stand up as you come up in between. Oh. Yep, so stand back oh. up. Okay. And now you're gonna bring the other leg back. There you go. And squeeze it here. Back up to stand. Come back. I mean, that's squeeze it here. So we're working easy, on, but I mean, it's, yeah. you're using your whole body. It's like, right. so we're working on stability of the lower body, strength, um, core stability, so that band isn't pulling you forward. Now, if you didn't have the resistance band, again, you can do this. I like to do it for uh, with like a towel, and I just keep it tight, so I'm not letting it kind of let. I don't let the um, it get loose. And then you do the same thing, and you just squeeze those shoulder blades back and together. So at home, you so, don't need to have those bands. And that's you know, if you have an older teen or whatever, yeah. and have them hold the band for you, and then you hold them for Absolutely. them for you. Exactly. Calls. Yeah, it's fun to be able to. Um, trade on and off. And yeah. With the band like that, you can make it a lot harder or a lot easier. Mm -hmm. So they're they're fun ones. Um, awesome. Our next uh, exercise, our 30 second, I'm going to have um, Christine, you take it down into a half kneeling position. So let's go with one knee down, one knee oh, up. Oh, okay. Yep, there you go. And you're going to hold that, yeah, just like that. Emily's going to keep that resistance. Okay. I'm going to have you come across your body. So you're coming down on your left hip and then up yeah there we go so again this one we're getting the benefit of getting a nice stretch through the front side of your left yeah. hip um, and we're working some rotation through your mid back your thoracic spine which tends to get a little bit locked up when we spend too much time on the computer so we keep great posture but we're still working that range of motion i'm feeling it and the core. core yeah there's some good yeah. oblique action that's going to kick in there too all right so this one obviously you would switch sides mm -hmm. but to both sides. We've got it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right. Um, and again, that one's a fun one to just trade off um, with your, you know, one person at home holding that, somebody else isn't. If you don't have that resistance band, just grab a pillow and do that same movement. Mm -hmm. Okay. It doesn't have to be anything heavy. You could add something that's weighted if you wanted to. Okay. Yeah. All Sorry. right. So my, uh, keeping my, my <laughs> notes here. Um, we are gonna do the next one. Emily's gonna keep holding that resistance. Yep. Christine, okay. I want you to hold the band straight out in front of you. You can so, just like, you have to promise that you're not gonna let go. Yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> move your hand through here. Please. What does okay. that be something like? Choo. Choo. Yeah. Um, so Emily is gonna be pulling resistance. I want you to try to keep this right here. Emily's okay. gonna give you a bit more resistance. This is an anti-rotation movement amazing trunk stability that we're developing. So you're gonna like feel that the side of your body, oh the right side of your body just firing up yes. everything from your shoulders, down the side of your body and through that hip. I now am. I'm, I'm gonna, Emily, you keep it right there. I'm gonna have you press. You're gonna bring it in and out and just see how that changes. So there are lots of ways that we can play with this. 
and have a little bit of fun. There you go. Keep <laughs> yeah, those shoulders yeah. relaxed. All right. And very yeah. carefully let go of that. <laughs> let, so I want to show you if you don't have the band at home and you're doing this with your kids, your spouse, someone else, bring your arms straight out just like they were. And now I'm just going to give oh, you... Oh, my arm is like one step. <laughs> or we'll work the other side. So you don't let me push you that way. So you're just activating oh, on yeah. here, right? Uh-huh. Okay. And then don't let yourself go up. Don't let yourself go down. Mm -hmm. So we're getting that same trunk stability activation. Yeah. This one is, is really great to just make sure that as you go through your daily life, that low back is nice and stable because we want your low back to stay stable. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, if you're moving around, it's like you pick up a piece of paper and that's when you throw out your back, right? It's not when you're doing safe lifts. Yes. So, oh, I like this that. This is a that good one. one. Was, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. More intense than it looked like. <laughs> yes. Well, and it's it's activating your entire body. Mm -hmm. So you have to remind yourself to breathe, and it's really going to feel like you're working everything because. You are. are. Yeah. 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 All right. So we're moving right on to our gate opener. So our active recovery on that one is you're just bringing your foot back and then bringing your leg forward as if you're opening up or stepping over a low gate. Right? Yeah, that's always a good one. You would have us do this one. Mm -hmm. It does felt so good in the morning. It's like, oh, yeah, get everything going. Yep. So our hips ball and socket joint, yeah. we should be able to move it in a really big range of motion. And if all we do during the day is just walk, sit down, walk, sit down, we aren't taking advantage of that full range of motion. And if we don't move it, we lose it. So being able to really open everything up is, is super important. Um, I'm gonna have you grab those dumbbells again. And our next exercise is a single leg bicep curl. So if you feel stable and safe, mm -hmm. you're going to stand on one leg and give yourself the curl. If that doesn't feel quite right, you're going to put that left leg down in a mm -hmm. kickstand. And okay. you can just take your <laughs> yeah, a little close there. Yeah. And so we're just going to stay stable and tall through our body. But it's even just doing that yep. mm -hmm. just gives you, it, yeah. you know, it gives you're you a still, little something different. Yeah, yeah. you're so one of the thing, reasons to, we're doing a bicep curl, simple exercise, but we want to add in a little bit more because then we're working other areas of our body yeah. that also need some attention. Okay, that's one I, because I, I love working my upper body. I shared that with you, lower body I hate. Um, I'm sorry, I do not hate, I strongly <laughs> dislike. Uh, but this is, a, you know, a good way to get yeah. in that leg and everything. Exactly. a simple move, just one foot it, I like mm -hmm. it. All right, we're gonna get one more exercise in here to wrap it up. Okay. And, um, excuse me, we're gonna do a plank. So there are lots of varieties of planks. We're gonna keep it really simple today. Okay. Um, I'm gonna have you take it down onto the floor, Christine. You're gonna be on your forearms and elbows. All right. And then we're gonna have the you- things right I do The things I do for the toes, show. Right? <laughs> we're just gonna let her stay there the rest of the show. <laughs> oh, that we're yeah. done, see you later. No. Nice. So um, you could always be on your knees, right? Lots of ways right. that we can make this And you a still bit feel it. Challenging, yep. I mean, just it doesn't look like it, but keeping, it yep. does. Yeah. So go ahead and come on up. If you're doing this with uh, a kid or a family member, go face to face across from each other, give each other high fives and taps, really fun ways to just get everyone involved in doing that activity with you. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you guys so much for sharing about Orange Shoe and giving our family some great exercises they can do. So no excuses. They can just watch these, do the exercise for a minute, do the recovery for 30 seconds. And you'll have a great workout in, get the family done. Yeah. I love the idea of making it competitive. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Thank you so much for tuning in to The Parenting Game. We're all familiar with the three what's, what it is, what it can do for me, and what does it cost? Tyler Rickenaut Country Financial can help you find the answers with insurance coverage to help protect what's most important to you, all at a price you can afford. So while you're juggling work and kids while trying to keep an eye on your financial future, Tyler Rickenaw and Country Financial will make sure they are the first ones there when you need them most. 
The kids are back to school, and your schedule is busier than ever. From daycare pickup, doctor's appointments, sports, and college tuition, a parent's signature is a powerful thing. Have you ever stopped to think, what would happen if you weren't able to provide one? With thoughtful estate planning, you can make sure that your child's health and education needs are met in the event of your absence due to a temporary incapacity or even death. The estate planning team at Hurley Burrish is here to help. Thank you for watching The Parenting Game. All episodes of The Parenting Game are available on demand at sunprairiemediacenter.com.